Hey guys, today I'm going to do a video of fixing up this old carburetor. It's got the tube broken off of it here. Now, uh, I'm not doing this for anybody and I wouldn't ever do something like this for somebody else's engine. I'm just building up an extra carburetor to have around for testing these motors. And I'm going to try to fix this with a JV weld on here. I don't see no reason why it won't work myself. Get lined up right and put a clamp on there to hold it like this and uh, let it sit for a couple days and take the clamp off and put some all the way around there to make sure it's sealed up and let it sit for about a week before I put it together and so I won't confuse it with another carburetor I'm probably going to paint it red that way it'll be kind of marked and I'll paint this too and the way it's marked All right, it's a little while later. I got the carburetor all painted up. And I JB welded the uh, emulsion tube one here, as you can see. It should hold, it seems pretty solid. Put a new gasket on here, bowl gasket. And I painted it up red, that way it's marked. I'm just gonna be using it around here to test motors out on. And that way I know which one this is without having to take it apart. And here's a brand new float for it, all new parts here to put in it. So we're going to get started on putting it back together. The first thing I'm going to do is put the nozzle in here, get it started by hand. You always want a screwdriver that don't have too much play in it, because this is brass and it will strip out real easy. They make a special tool for these, but I don't have one right now. I need to get me one. And then when you get it to you feel it stop, you just barely turn it, just to snug it. These are known for getting stuck in there, as you've seen in my, one of my carburetor rebuild videos. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get the float set up on here. So your needle just sits on there like that. Make sure it's square with the float. This one probably going to need adjusted because it's brand new. They usually don't come adjusted right. Stick the pin in here. You can see it's not sitting level. I need to bend the uh, tab in just a little bit so it sits about like that. You just bend the tab right here with the needle sticks on the float just bend it until you get the float level with the carburetor here okay a few minutes later after I bent that tab you can see it's sitting pretty much level now it's up just a hair which is alright and when I blow through here it, no air escapes as soon as you lift up you can hear it escape and you let down it stops so it's working right so I shouldn't have no overflow problems at all on this Another little tip, you always want to get this pin centered. If it's off to the side, your bowl can hit it there and it may not, uh, might get in the way. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put the bowl on here. You're supposed to have a gasket on here, but I don't have one. You always want to back this out just about all the way, because if, uh, if that's sticking out, it'll uh, put pressure on the jet there. You can actually... Uh, bend that or mess up the uh, needle this is half inch get that pretty snug not real tight on this one because it's only got JB weld holding it so there's the bottom half of the carburetor put together now you go ahead and screw this in until it uh, stops but don't go any further don't force it Right there it stopped. Now I'm going to screw it out one and a half turns. That kind of presets it, gets you get it started. So it's one and a half turns. And you can put this tube in here. And 
again, this is just brass, so you got to be careful with it. You don't want to get it too tight, it'll strip out. Just barely snug, that's all you got to do. And same for this is the bottom adjustment. Screw it in all the way until it just stops. You don't want to force it. There, there it stopped. One, two, three. Three half turns is one and a half turns out. Now this carburetor is ready to go. And what I like to do, after you get it all together, I like to blow through it to make sure that the float's working. If you blow through it upside down, you shouldn't be able to blow through it. And when it's upright, you should be able to. That's how you know the float's working. And it's working fine. So now let's bolt it up on the engine and see how it runs. Alright guys, we got the carburetor mounted on here. If you notice, I got a spring hook on the throttle for right now because I don't have a, I don't have the uh, correct uh, rod to hook, it up, to hook the carburetor up to the governor. Because the rod is there is for the two-piece carburetor and it's a little bit different. Not, not quite as long. Get a fuel valve here so I can shut it off if I need to. Yeah, I don't see no gas leaks, so that's a good sign. Double check here, make sure yeah, no gas leaks at all. And it's not overflowing in the carburetor, so something's working right here. <laughs> Get my fuel wire out here. I don't know where it's at.
Ain't had one do that for a while. We'll see how easy it is to start. It should start right up. Well, guys, you can see I got the gas one there, and now it's not overflowing, so it must have just been a needle seating in or something. I don't know. <laughs> I got the rubber tip needle on it. Sometimes it'll give you a problem now and then. If that carburetor's been sitting for a while, so it might have been a little bit of rust or something, or dirt up on the seat there. But it seems to be sealing pretty good now and starting easy, so. Well guys, if you got any questions or comments, leave a comment below or send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, thanks for watching.